Good morning, guys. How are y'all doing today? This is Sheila with Sheila's One Stop Coaching Channel, where every Wednesday and Friday, I put out videos with content. On Wednesdays, I talk about my writing journey, and I've been reading out of my Be Devotional book. I mean, not my Be Devotional book, my bad. After, uh, reading Life After the Mistake, we are going to read in Chapter 8 today. But if you watch my channel, you're a subscriber, you've seen that I kind of randomly put a video out yesterday. It has a lot of rich content, even though it was a speech thing that I kind of did for the Toastmasters Club. It has a lot of good tips in it, things that I learned along the way. <clears throat> and like I said in my speech, I'm no expert by no means. But I have learned a few things along the way that I apply now, even in my B devotionals. And I am planning on writing Life After the Mistake 2. I just don't know just when. I'm just waiting on God. You know, I started it, and I have a few chapters, but I've not felt the unction, like, from the Holy Ghost to kind of get on that one and continue on because I guess because there's some other things that's got to take place or so there's some other things that's going to take place that I will need to put in that book. <clears throat> but anyway, I shared that yesterday. So please, if you want to know anything about the writing, writing tips, you can go watch the video that I put out yesterday. It would have been 11 11 10 is on a Tuesday, and I normally don't put out videos on Tuesdays. I usually just put out videos on Wednesdays and Fridays. But it was also like a trial run. And if you'll notice, well, you may not notice, but I am on my phone again today. I'm making the video on my phone. Then I will upload it to my YouTube channel from my phone because it's been keeping my laptop tied up for too long. For some reason, it's taken two hours or over two hours to load and I'm doing computer classes and I'm doing other things on my laptop and I need it even you know even trying to you know write more devotionals I need that open that I can be using it because one reason I do my best work my best thinking in the morning times so I want my laptop to be free in the mornings but on Wednesdays I have been reading life after the mistake each chapter. So, again, if you haven't purchased it and you want to read it or you want to hear it read, you can go back and probably, let's see this, we're fixing to read chapter eight. So, go back eight weeks, <laughs> maybe a little bit more because I think a couple of chapters I had to split them up. But uh, <clears throat> I, um, I still read them, but because they were so long, I had to split them up. But on Fridays, I've been reading out of my B devotional. It's fixing to be on Amazon, guys. I know I've been saying that for about a month now, but there's just been so many things coming and going, you know. But I am purchasing today, Lord's willing, I will be purchasing the ISBNs in a bundle. That's what I was trying to do is wait until I got the correct amount of money that I could buy the bundle because, okay, for instance, one of them is $125. Well, you can buy 10 for $299. It's the ISBN number. It's this thing right here. Now, I got this one free from Amazon, <clears throat> but because I took a free ISBN number, I can't take this book and put it on other platforms. I mean, there you can... But there's a long, it's a long way around to do it. And I may do it eventually. The more I learn, I may do that eventually. Basically, what I'd have to do is like do it, um, <clears throat> a revised edition and put one of my, my own ISBN numbers on this. Then I can take it and put it on other platforms. But anyway, that's just some of the trial and error. That's part of growing, part of learning in this journey of writing. But anyway, without further delay, I'm going to go ahead and read chapter 8 today in Life After the Mistake. I'm going to read, it's called chapter 8. The name of the chapter is A Place <clears throat> to Begin Again. 
2 Corinthians, this is the verse that is in the front. Yeah, um, there's a verse in this little picture here at the front of every chapter. And in the front part, the, it's like there's three, there's three parts. There's a, uh, you know, before and middle and after. But this is the beginning. So in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 19, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. And have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. And I love God. He's so good to us. To wit, that God was in Christ. God was in Christ. Reconciling the world unto himself. Not imputing their trespasses unto them. And have committed us. And have committed unto us. The word of reconciliation. Guys, there's a place in the Bible that says, if he was to mark iniquity, if he was to mark iniquity, who could stand? Oh, yeah, you might not have committed adultery. You might not have stole nothing. You might not have never did drugs or alcohol or, you know, all this cheating, lying, stealing. But if you ever gossiped, you sinned. If you worried, I feel like if you worry, you to you can worry to a point that it becomes sin to you. There's a lot of things. If you thought something ugly in your heart towards somebody, you've sinned. You've got to ask God to forgive you regardless. Nobody is above those things. If he was to mark iniquity, who could stand? I don't care who you say you are, how strong you've been all these years. If God was to mark iniquity, who could stand? So I'm going to proceed on now and read in chapter 8. So Roger and Shelley moved away from that area. Now remember, Roger and Shelley's got married now. Uh, Shelley found a husband, found someone, you know, that really took her in and loved her and, and showed what a husband could really be to her. They went to another church in another, th in another town. Things went pretty smooth for the most part, and life was moving forward. Shelley's sin was in the rear view. Roger had always felt the call to pastor, but now that he had a divorce on his record, religious rules in their denomination would persuade some to say that he was disqualified. Roger had these principles drilled into him in his entire life. And while I don't intend to dispute anyone's church doctrine or interpretation of the Bible, I hope to show you how two broken people can become whole again. Two people answered the call of God. Let go of all of men's opinions and walk out now, two people answered the call of God. They let go of all a man's opinion, and they walked out their God-given dreams. If it is possible for them, it is possible for you. But it didn't happen overnight. Five years passed, and life with Roger was good. He was kind to her and faithful. It was a life that she only dreamed of as a young woman. But there was a pull at Shelley's soul, a longing to go back home to her home church. She desperately tried to bury her past, but the past wasn't the problem. Something was missing. People may have said, don't think about home. You've burned that bridge. You have to let it go. That truly would have been easier if God agreed. Shelley enjoyed the new church, but there was no replacing her home. <clears throat> I want to come back home. Those are the words that rode out of Shelley's mouth. The voice on the other end of the phone lovingly sighed, come on back home.
Uh, God, it stirs my heart every time I read that, every time I say that. It's like I feel that all over again. I feel that. That was the voice that was such a comforting. That voice was such a comforting, familiar voice. It was Shelley's former pastor from the church she once called home. The one where she made the mistake. Could it be happening? Could Shelley really be going back home? What happened that made Shelley finally make that call or even want to make that dramatic move? The church Shelley had recently been attending was a different organization. The opportunities for her to serve God in an impactful way were much more limited there. They loved Shelley and they made her feel welcome, but the longing to walk in her calling was buried deep in Shelley's heart so deep that she almost forgot what it was like, like to feel that amazing feeling that comes with being used of God. Then one day, something happened that made her know she had to bury her pride and make that call. She now realizes that God had allowed this hurtful situation to occur. He had some work to do in other people's lives from Shelley's former church. Now, I want to try to bring an understanding in here. Something happened at the church that Shelley had been attending for five years. Some things went down, some things were said, uh, some hurtful things uh, from the leadership, which really, though, when you boil it all down to it, it just, God's handprint was all over it because he intended for Shelley to go back home. He intended for her to go back to the place that she came from because there was there was she needed healing and there were some people at that church her home church that needed to forgive Shelly that needed some closure and needed some healing and needed to forgive her why would Shelly want to go back to that church why couldn't she just find another assembly that would use her in their pulpit maybe she could but truly, all Shelly wanted to do was to go back home. She was searching for that safe place she knew it to be. That place where love filled the air and hearts were comforted. That following Wednesday night, Shelly walked back into her home church. The atmosphere was electric. Emotions were bouncing for for. Em Emotions were bouncing for everyone. No doubt, some were appalled, some nervous, and others were overjoyed. She knew God was showing her mercy. Roger didn't accompany her for several weeks. He had not rejected God during these five years away, but he did stumble off of his path of closeness and purpose for him. Now, there's a, there's a big, long scripture here, but I won't read that. That's just some, each, each chapter has some scriptures lined in them, but I won't read that. I'm just going to read on with the chapter because we're getting almost through. He attended church where Shelly at, he, he attended church with Shelly at the other church, but he didn't claim to live a holy life. Now faced with Shelly's pleas for him to join her, Roger told her, it was embarrassing to him. This church was also Roger's former church as well. When he attended there, he had been married to his first wife. He had been a minister in this church for a few years, but his wife had left him and his life had spun out of control shortly after. So to come back divorced and remarried was somewhat humiliating. Roger had been told his whole life his entire life that divorce and remarriage was against God's will. No matter what others told him, Shelley and Roger still believed God would bring things full circle. Soon Roger also couldn't deny the undeniable pulling in his heart to go back home. It wasn't long before Roger was sitting beside Shelley at their former church. Roger came back to God and this would start a whole new journey for both of them. Roger and Shelley both 
had thrown off all restraints, living like there was no tomorrow. No payday was coming for the ungodly seeds that they were sowing. Just because they had freedom to live as they chose, it didn't come without penance. They realized that God was waiting on them with open arms and a better life in store. Just like the prodigal son, they had to go back the way they came to truly realize the magnitude of this restoration process that God was bringing into view. Could God, in all his sovereignty, be reaching for them? Like a father trying to save a drowning child? Could the God of the universe want two broken people that smell like the pig, pig pen? Yes, he wanted them. His purpose for them was so much more than they could even fathom. Right in the middle of Roger and Shelley's story, God is reaching for you as well. The father in the story of the prodigal son was watching for his son, for his son to return. This is the same as the God of our souls waiting on us to come back home. And then at the end of some of the chapters, there was a blank page because of the way the layout was in the uh, Kindle Direct Publishing. And so my editor, she contacted me, and then you've probably heard me say this. She said, Sheila, do you want to put something in those blank pages? You want to put pictures? You want to put scriptures? You want to put quotes? I said, let's put some quotes in there because we've got scriptures lined out through the whole chapter or through the whole book. They're before every chapter. They're in the chapters. So I thought giving a quote at the end of, and it's, they're not at the end of every chapter. It was just some random chapters at a blank page. So this is the, this is the quote. Sometimes the hardest part is letting go. Sometimes the hardest part isn't letting go but rather learning to start over. So Roger and Shelley went back to their home church, the place that the adultery and the affair had took place, the place that Roger had attended church and his divorce took place in that church, you know, and an affair had took place there with Shelley and they went back to their home church. Now you tell me if God, don't have a sense of humor to take you back to the place you fell and say, hey, we got to make this right. But this this quote was from Nicole Sobin called in the Emily Reed Chronicles. This was read from the Emily Reed Chronicles by Nicole Sobin. Sometimes the hardest part isn't letting go, but rather learning to start over. So next week, guys, we will be reading from chapter 9. I am so glad y'all came today. If you are new here, I say welcome to my channel. If you are a subscriber, I say welcome back. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe to my channel. Like it, share it, comment on it. Follow me as I read this book. Guys, we still got, uh, I think there ended up being about 20-something chapters so this is good. And I'm going to be back Wednesday reading out of my B devotional. Of course, my B devotional is in my Google Docs. I'll be back Friday, my bad. Um, my, my B devotional is in my Google Docs. <clears throat> and so I'm reading it out of there right now. But hopefully, maybe before this week is over with or when I come back next Wednesday, maybe I can announce the the publishing of my B devotional, How to Be Prosperous, will be on Amazon and be for sale. But anyway, guys, I'm going to get off here for today. Just follow me for good tips. And um, if you need to ask me something, you can contact me. You can comment in the in the uh, comments below. Just, you know, if you want to write a book, write it. Go back and watch yesterday's video. This is 11... 11, yesterday was 11.10, and it's, uh, I think I put on there the speech that I do in Toastmasters about us. The name of the speech was, So You Want to Write a Book? 
and I give a lot of good informational, rich content and tips on the writing journey that I have been on. But guys, y'all have a great day. Have a great weekend. We are still up in the air. Some are calling Biden uh, president, uh, the projected president, the President Trump is suing uh, different states and different cities. Guys, our only hope is God. Our only hope is God. We got to get a hold of him and stay close and stay strong and get in the word of God and know, know the power of God in our lives. But until Friday, y'all have a great day. I love you guys. Thanks for watching.